fishing stories are pervasive in Arkansas. We've all heard harrowing tales of hooking a monster. And every time the story is told, that fish seems to get bigger and meaner. When you're uncovering the oldest stories of a place, the lore of a place, it's a lot like having a monster fish on the end of your line. No matter how you try to control it, it's got a mind of its own. Cryptozoology is basically the study of unknown or undiscovered creatures. And it kind of has fallen over into the, the odd stories like Bigfoot and Loch Ness and all the oddity stories. Well, Mr. Jamie, what are they biting on this week? My uncle used to, he'd say, let me look in your box, and he'd try to pick something he didn't have. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, since I was a kid, I've always had an interest in anything unusual, and as I've gotten older and gotten the chance to go out and explore and actually talk to people that have witnessed these things, everyday, ordinary people, doctors, you know, housewives, uh, you know, pet salon owners, uh, Real people are seeing things or hearing things when they are out in the wilderness that uh, they cannot explain and it makes you wonder what really is out there. Surprisingly, there seems to be quite a few oddities here in Arkansas. One of the lesser known ones is the White River Monster. The earliest report I can find is 1864. The colonel uh, in the Civil War, Colonel Craven, decided to go out fishing on the White River. As fish stories go, he hooked a monster that he referred to as a devil fish. He said it was six inches between its eyes, that's how big its head was, and that the body itself was five foot wide. He said it had more legs and claws than he could count. There's so many animals that people thought were extinct that weren't. We really do have some prehistoric monsters in these waters. The sturgeon is one. It's been around for millions of years and it could even be a gar. The alligator gars get up to 12 feet long. I think there's just I think there's just an interest in in things that may be possible. 1937 is basically when it made national news. There was a plantation owner just outside of Newport that fishermen in the area reported to him because they were just off the shores of his property that they had seen a large creature. Uh, they described it having elephant. Uh, like skin and it was four to five foot wide. When they went to the media with the story, it kind of took on a little uh, life of its own, a little media frenzy for the time. Uh, I guess nowadays you would call that going viral. And, uh, and from there, the former Navy diver, uh, Charles Brown, decided he was going to tackle the adventurer and go into the river armed with an eight foot spear and catch this thing. The visibility in this river is, he said it was only about three inches. And the first time he went down, he got stuck in the muck and they had to pull him out. The second time he went down, something happened with the valves in his air equipment and he bobbed to the surface like a cork. And the third time he said that all he saw was a dead log and a large catfish. That also made headline news that uh, the, uh, the monster had eluded uh, a famous Navy diver. In 1971, a Japanese news team dispatched camera crews over. They were going to document and maybe do a little 
documentary on this creature and they spent some time in Newport. It didn't fit the large size of the earlier reports, but they also uh, said it had a horn sticking out of its head, like a bone horn sticking out of its head. 1970s were kind of a hot topic for monsters. It's like the, the, the public wanted to consume any story that involved uh, any kind of creature. 1973, Senator uh, Robert Harvey is responsible for uh, getting our state government to issue a sanctuary on the river to protect the creature from harm. I mean, that even made news because it's, never, it's not been done before and it hasn't been done since to protect something that hasn't been proven to exist. In February of 1973, in a bill adopted by voice vote, the state Senate designated a section of the White River from Jacksonport to Possum Grape to be an official White River Monster Refuge. Referring to periodic sightings by reputable persons, this non-binding resolution sponsored by Senator Robert Harvey of nearby Swifton made it unlawful to molest, kill, trample, or harm the White River Monster while in its native retreat, and no violations have yet been reported. I honestly believe that everybody saw something. I don't think that they were all seeing the same thing. And when you try to put all those together, you get a monster. I want to believe there's something unusual out here. Just for the sake, I like unusual things. There's always been an interest in the odd and the unexplained. And me personally, that, that, that's my entertainment, is to come out here and pe some people think I'm crazy, but to me, it doesn't matter if it's real or not. It would be awesome if it is. You never know. Like the scariest of monsters, stories have the ability to change and adapt whenever they reemerge from the shadows. Time and again, the White River Valley thought they were done with their resident monster, and time and again, he reemerged with a scarier look and a creepier encounter. In places as old as Arkansas, you don't have to be a monster hunter. Just sit still long enough and something's bound to rise to the surface.